Every video here on 616 Entertainment is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoy the show here today, consider signing up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos and podcasts and more. Pro Wrestling Tees has the merch. As always, thank you for watching. Oh, how you doing, Dan Ans? My name is Ian. Welcome to 616 Nitro. Last week, we took out every one of those black and white WWF superstars on our quest to the WWF Championship. Ahmed Johnson, The Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, The Rock, and the British Bulldog stand in our way. The war zone will tremble at the feet of Stone Cold. Welcome to the World Wrestling Federation. For over 50 years, the dominating force in professional wrestling. I'm Vince McMahon. I'm Jim Ross. We have a great match for our fans tonight. Here comes Ahmed Johnson, the man from Pearl River, Mississippi. He is awesome, just awesome. Austin is cold, calculating, and very, very focused. Whether you like him or you hate him, you have to admire the gut of Stone Cold Steve Austin. Dan Dance, I have had so much fun coming back to Warzone. And, you know, some of you say sometimes with Mortal Kombat Monday or 616 Nitro, it's like, I mean, you kind of, you've played some of these games before. Warzone is a strange case where I have only ever done one episode playing this game. You know, Triangle X Squared Circle was its first appearance on this channel, and that's a retrospective series, not a playthrough weekly style thing. I did one episode on Warzone on, on 616 Smackdown. That's how long ago that was. I want to say it was like 2021 as Ahmed Johnson wishbones the shit out of me. That didn't feel good. And you know what's really a problem is the one and only Panda Bear Karloff has woken up. She's walking around the house. She's looking for something to do. And usually when that happens, it means that whatever I was doing is done for. It must stop, so this recording may have to be paused. We will uh, we'll find out in just a second. Snapmare takeover there from the master of the Pearl River Plunge who blocks the Spinebuster once, but he can't do it twice. Oh my goodness, the stomp to the knee. Ahmed Johnson, for some reason, wears several pairs of knee pads that go like all the way up his thighs. It's one of the damnedest fucking things you'll ever see in your life. I don't know why he does that, or did that. Ahmed Johnson is long retired now. But maybe I will show him how useless all of that padding is by submitting him with the Texas Cloverleaf. Samoan drop! Put him right in his place. Big leg drop! Does Austin have time to go to the top rope? It doesn't appear as though he does. Ahmed Johnson reaches his feet. Austin with a fucking double axe handle out of the sky. Oh, hell yeah, indeed. A dominant performance. Whoa! Obviously, the momentum can turn on a dime. Running Bulldog and Steve Austin is face down. Might be out cold. Shout out to Ben, who just signed up to Patreon while I'm recording. You just signed up as Ben. I would give you a, a deeper shout out, but I don't think you want me to share your email, and I'm not sure what your last name is yet. So, thank you, Ben. I greatly appreciate that. I'm going to have to check the numbers, check the tape, as Nigel Bravo would say, and find out where we are, but I think we might be well on our way to hitting the next Patreon goal, which is the Super Nintendo Exploration Series. And if you don't know what that is, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like this. It doesn't actually look anything like a Stone Cold Stunner. I was just talking shit. The Super Nintendo Exploration Series will not be a Let's Play show. That will be a retrospective series specifically focused on the library of the Super Nintendo. And that's it! That was an impressive win. Ahmed Johnson should go back to the gym and train. Good lord, Jim Ross talking some big shit here. Ready? Are you serious? That was the worst display of athleticism I have ever seen. The way you bobbled around the ring. 
You're lucky to have even made it to the WWF. Let me show you how a true thoroughbred wins his battles. Welcome to the World Wrestling Federation, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. I'm Vince McMahon. And I'm good old JR. We have a great match for our fans tonight. Are you ready? Triple H is the only true blue blood in the WWF. His arrogance is annoying. I gotta give WWF Warzone its flowers here, but hold on one second. Steve Austin is the toughest SOB in the WWF. Look at the ice cold stare in Austin's eye. Unbelievably, we got a one on one match between Austin and Triple H. Triple H didn't take kindly to the loss, so a grudge match was booked. No holds barred, no disqualification. And I absolutely dominated him. I embarrassed him. Triple H talks more shit. Austin versus Triple H three in a steel cage. Why is the booking so good <laughs> here in WWF Warzone? What the fuck is going on? Why is the booking better here than it is in fucking the universe mode in the current 2K games? The third match between these guys and it's gonna take place inside a cage. This will be the blow off. Are you kidding? That's fucking awesome. Now, if we were really trying to book for the sake of, you know, the highest drama and making the most sense, I think you should go one apiece and then you get in the cage to settle the score. But, you know, it is what it is. You can also feel free to question where the ring posts, turnbuckles, and ropes are. I do not uh, have the answer to that question, nor have I ever had the answer to that question. They are conspicuously missing. Big, beautiful scoop slam, and then check out this DD fucking T. Right into the dragon sleeper. Uh, Dan Dan, I'm serious. If you have not played Warzone in a while, Come back to it, man. Check it out. I'm not saying that it's going to be your new favorite wrestling game. I'm not saying that it's going to blow you away in the sense like, oh, I was wrong about it this entire time. It's not like that. But it is a lot of fun. Genuine. Oh, yeah. Smash him into the cage. Do it again. One more time. Oh, no. Triple H reverses the Irish whip. Locks on a sleeper hold in the middle of the ring. Front face DDT. And now I'm just destroying this guy. And that's what the fans came to fucking... Oh, Triple H avoids my right hand, hits one of his own. Well, I will tell you that the Texas Cloverleaf has been applied. We are inside... A solid steel cage, a salad steel cage, as Bruce Pritchard would say. Mike Masters knows what I'm talking about. Oh my goodness! I forgot how to do the power bomb when I'm in shit. Not when I'm in shit, when I'm in the grapple. I thought it was left right circle or left right triangle, but none of those are working. Power bomb is left up circle, that's what it is. Check it out. Come on, man, hit that power bomb. What are you playing? Into the cage. Man. Good stuff. Samoan drop. Austin has... Austin has Triple H right where he wants him. He's climbing the steel cage. Will he take the victory or will Triple H... Oh, fuck. What do you... Okay. Dude. That was unbelievable. That was really unbelievable. Triple H could have won right there. Because it wouldn't let me punch the cage. It wouldn't let me shake the cage. He could have just got out. I do really like that the AI took a chance and went for a clothesline off the top. And they actually did hit it, which was fucking awesome. But we're, we're lucky. We have, to th we have to thank our lucky stars on that one because that could have gotten away from us. But the Stone Cold Stunner will not get away. From Triple H. See you later, pal. Yeah, well, you know what? I've had enough risks for one day.
Well, they didn't ring the bell and the announcers aren't saying anything, so that's strange, but Austin wins the cage match! With Triple H knocked even further down the rankings, now Stone Cold looks up at the Phenom. Is there any movement at the top of the rankings? There does not seem to be. British Bulldog has been reigning as the World Wrestling Federation Champion since we started. And if anyone's going to knock him off that peak, it's going to be Austin. You can feel the chill in the air as The Undertaker enters a ring. No one can escape the reach of the Reaper. No one can escape the reach of the Reaper. That is excellent. Austin is cold, calculating, and very, very focused. That man is pure rattlesnake. Undertaker versus Austin. <clears throat> I feel like these guys had some of the most important, some of the most memorable moments of the Attitude Era these two shared, whether it was while these two were feuding or they just happened to be in the same place at the same time. I never thought anything cross about it. But if you ever hear Austin or Undertaker talk about the matches that they had together, neither one of them are really pleased with them. Austin always, he constantly says that for whatever reason, he feels that he and Undertaker did not have any chemistry. And I never felt that way. Did you guys feel that way? Let me know in the comments. If you go back, then not, fuck that, not even go back. Because now you'll watch it with a more critical, you know, a, a closer eye because you're an adult and you understand more. When you were younger and you saw Austin and Undertaker wrestle, did you ever feel like, oh, these guys are not... This is oil and water, you know? Because apparently that's how they feel. Undertaker trying to squeeze my head like he's fucking Michael Myers. Man, that backbreaker, that sideways backbreaker. Taker has hit me with that like four times. How about Samoan drop? You know, you want to repeat a move, I'll repeat a move. You want to see a move that I haven't used in a while? Fuck! I was looking for my power bomb. Isn't it left up triangle? No, it must be left up circle. Hold on. Whoa! Asshole breaker! Hold on. Undertaker looking to fucking put a stop to my momentum, but it's not gonna happen. There's the power bomb! Keep fucking with me, Taker, and I'll show you how to do the last ride. Oh man, that, that big uppercut, that big wind-up uppercut. That's that had some Undertaker stank on it, don't you think? Here's the tie-up. There's that backbreak you like so much. I got receipt skis for you, Taker. Anything you can do, I can do better, except probably a tombstone pile driver, so don't put me in that position. Don't Check this out. I love that DDT. Look, here's another question I got for you. I, I'm full of questions for you this weekend, Dance. When it comes to a DDT, do you like a flat pancake or do you like a head spike? Let me know in the comments. I know Gwenoki, who designed the Sacred Stars t-shirt, who designed the Rainbow Tokyo t-shirt, who designed the Smile t-shirt, aka the Blood t-shirt, Gwenoki prefers a pancake cell on a DDT. But where do you fall? Undertaker falls like that, pancake style. Gwenoki likes that DDT. I'm just beating this dead man's ass. If he was not dead before, he certainly would be after this one. Spine Buster! Hey, Taker, have you ever seen, up close and personal, have you ever seen the Stone Cold Stunner? I think Undertaker's out cold. I love that Vince McMahon just called him Steve for no reason. Well, what the fuck is that? Who is that? I won the, that was for the Intercontinental title? Some slammed out babe gets in the ring and Daisy Dukes with the Intercontinental title and walks around like someone who's not even a human being? Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, dude. Could you imagine if the cover of WWF magazine just said, Icy Belt Champion captures title? What the fuck? Rookie, I love to watch you wrestle. I hope you keep winning. 
I have a couple questions. And as the IC belt champion, I feel as though it's okay for me to ask them, what was that woman who clearly has money? She was getting out of big stretch limo. What was she doing walking into an empty warehouse? Don't tell me that right next door was some fancy hotel because that's not true. It's an empty fucking warehouse. As the IC belt champion, I would like to know, unbelievably, The Rock has ended the reign of the British Bulldog. We have a new WWF champion, but Shawn Michaels is next. Say what you want about Shawn Michaels' attitude. He can still get it done. He's the most Brazilian wrestler in the history of the WWF. Shawn Michaels rocking the DX gear. Listen, you're going to be an X number one contender when I'm done with you. Back in the day, one of my favorite people to play this game with was Shawn Michaels. Oh, and a double underhook suplex out of nowhere by the Heartbreak Kid. I just loved how you could hit the sweet chin music out of nowhere. And it wasn't easy, you know, with the fucking dial-a-combo controls here in Warzone. It was not easy. It's like left, left, up, square, and fucking triangle or some shit like that. You really had to line up the sweet chin music in order to hit it. So, spine busters are what I see in the future of Shawn Michaels. And I also see a power bomb or two. And Shawn Michaels kips up. Shawn Michaels says, I've seen you working through the rank Stone Cold Steve Austin, and I'm not taking you lightly. Leg drop! And that knee brace amplifies that leg drop big time. You better believe it, you son of a bitch. Big uppercut! Shawn Michaels is out on his feet! Powerbomb! Oh, Jim Ross said powerbomb the same way I did. Now it makes me feel like an A-plus commentator. Ooh, discus punch! Shawn Michaels drops Austin, but the success was short-lived. The deeper we get into this playthrough, the higher up we get in the rankings, you think the competition would get stiffer and stiffer. And maybe it is from a factual standpoint, but from a visual standpoint, Austin 316 says, I just whipped your fucking ass to every single one of these jump brody jump brody. Woo, off the ropes he goes, misses the drop kick, Luthes press, fuck you, Shawn Michaels, heartbreak kid, my fucking ass. Austin 316 says I just whipped your Boom. ass. You're goddamn right he does. You know what? Belly to belly suplex, and I think I'll follow it up with one of these. The crowd is on its feet. Steve is bringing down the house. Try as he might, Shawn Michaels cannot kick out of the stunner. It's all over. That was an impressive win. Shawn Michaels was out flat from the start. Killing these guys in record time. Who's next? There will be hell to pay if you wish to step into the ring with the dead man. You were brave to have made it this far in the Federation. But now my creatures of the night are screaming for your soul. And I must provide it for them. Listen, Taker, I like you. I don't know what this bullshit is that you think is going on here. I don't know if you think that I'm trying to jump you in the rankings or whatever. I didn't jump anybody. I didn't cut in line. I beat your, your ass, just like I beat Triple H's ass, just like I beat fucking goddamn it. You know what? These fans are chanting for me already, Undertaker, because I'm undefeated in the World Wrestling Federation. Something you could never dream of being. Something you could never dream, dream of being. <laughs> and if you need me to smash every item in this ring over your head to prove to you that I'm better than you, I'll do it. Scoop slam. And... Scoop slam. You know what? Farouk kept breaking my TVs, and apparently you do too. I don't know what it is about my televisions that you guys can't stand. I think they are quality products. I'm proud of them. I stand by them. Rake of the eyes and a Samoan drop on a fucking ring bell. Leg drop for your deeds. Check it out. 
boom, well, boom. One of my favorite new t-shirts over on ProWrestlingTees.com slash 616 Entertainment is the Show Me How t-shirt. And I made that shirt because you asked me to. You guys told me that you wanted Show Me How shirts. You were tired of seeing me get fucked on in Mortal Kombat Monday. And you said, if you build it, we will come. You know what? I fucking built it. But thus far, here on 616 Nitro, I have had no need for a Show Me How shirt because every single one of these guys lines themselves up and I turn them away like they're nothing because they are. Undertaker's health is just not going down. I will stomp his ass. I usually like to hit the kick of the gut before the stunner, but I don't have to. You know, I can switch it up. I can switch it up. Uh, whoa, big suplex. Undertaker not taking kindly to that loss, but he doesn't have to. Million dollar dream locked in. Austin trying to cut off the flow of the blood to the brain of the Undertaker, and I think he was able to do it! And that's all she wrote. What a lopsided victory. I don't think Undertaker tapped out. I think he passed out. I heard his body hit the ground. A submission win for Austin! And with that victory, there are very few wrestlers still standing in our way. The former WWF champion, the British Bulldog, is number two. And I'm looking to knock him off, okay? I am the IC belt champion, after all. Bret Hart wipes the floor with Sean. Shades of real life. Can the British Bulldog turn away Stone Cold? I doubt it. British Bulldog's theme music is so loud. If any song gets me in trouble, it might be that one. I don't buy for a second that this is a number one contenders match. I can easily see the game fucking on me. Leg drop, just as they always try to do. Now, I stunned the British Bulldog. Now, what a Stone Cold Stunner. I filled his stun meter. He recovered, and his, his health bar did not decline in color at all until right there. I really like the triple scoop slam that CM Punk was using as a signature move in AEW. I feel like nobody even noticed that he was doing that because I'm like the only one who ever talks about it. But while everybody else was doing springboard 630s and phoenix splashes and shit, one of Punk's moves that he introduced was the triple scoop slam and I fucking loved it. Oh, what the fuck was going on there? Did you hear Bulldog? I'm fucked, Brett. I'm fucked. DDT, if you weren't fucked before, you certainly are now. You goddamn right. Spine Buster! There's no trap door in the ring. This is not WCW Fall Brawl 98. If you know, you know. Into the corner. Looking for the 10 point. Whoa! Military press from Bulldog. That was extremely impressive. Even if it was on me and I shouldn't like it, I still do. On me like a bomb me. You know what I'm saying? Everybody had Vietnamese food? Power bomb. <laughs> what a call that was. Dude, bond me. I could go for a fucking bond me right now. Off the ropes. Bulldog arm drag on the return. What else do we have for him? Off the ropes. I love a back body drop. You know, if, if anybody ever asks me, like, what are your favorite wrestling moves? If, you know, you think about a swanton bomb. You think about a tombstone pile driver. I love a back body drop. What are some basic wrestling moves that you guys like? That's what I want to know. Are you a Samoan drop fan? Leg drop. Are you a leg drop fan? Who has the best leg drop in your mind? I have, I have a pick. I think it is hard to beat 
the top rope guillotine leg drop of Psychosis. He got so much fucking air on that thing. And I think that a leg drop off the top rope is a 10 out of 10 pick for a finisher. Now, nobody really does it, and it's probably for the best that they don't. Because that's an extremely taxing move. Cover. Oh my goodness! Off a short right hand. I think Austin might have hit Bulldog on the butt and knocked him out cold. Stone Cold becomes number one contender. Jesus Christ. Oh, I have something to give you. Are you ready? Feel free to use whatever you can find, you low-class scum. From the looks of things, you can use all the help you can get. But all I need is a pedigree to put an end to your wrestling career. Welcome to the World Wrestling Federation, the revolutionary force in sports entertainment. I skipped that because I'm actually going to... Oh, what a spike, DDT. I am going to make an amendment on something that I said. Fisherman suplex. Perfect plex. Call it what you will. Going to make an amendment on something that I said either last week or this week. I don't remember when it was because they're both the same day for me. I put over Warzone for having great booking and having Austin versus Triple H. Then Austin Triple H 2 was no holds barred. Austin Triple H 3 inside a cage. And I was like, this is a natural progression. This works. This is how a feud should be built and blown off. Why did my health change color before he, his did? That was bullshit. Let's hit that triple scoop slam. Shout out to CM Punk. Oh, what a beautiful reversal. Um, but here we are. After I beat Triple H three times. The last match was a, was a cage match and I beat him. Austin versus Triple H four in a cage? For what? What is the purpose? Now, clearly they have upped the difficulty because he's reversing my moves now and he's dodging out of the way of my strikes. He's hit me with power bombs. We might be looking at a difficulty spike here, which, oh, DDT, oh, come on. Yeah, we're definitely looking at a, at a difficulty spike here. My health is draining much quicker than his. And the crowd is behind him. He's dodging, basically. Look, my health went down again. One punch. And he dropped my health to a new color. This is some hog shit, dog shit bullshit. And we might be in for a fuck fest here. Big time. In fact, I have no doubt. Look at this. The stun meter is so full, and I'm on light green. I'm on, like, barely yellow. Oh, I don't, I'm not happy about this. All the momentum that we've built. Look, if you wanted to do this, okay? If this is how you wanted to handle business, then you shouldn't have had me kill Triple H three times already, you know? We could have been in the cage, and then you hit me with the difficulty spike. You did it too early. Power bomb, Dan Dan's. I would like to hear a story about you dealing with a with a difficulty spike in a video game. That's what I want to know about. Especially if you have some unfair difficulty spikes. Tell me about the frustration. Tell me about some stuff that you were like, this is clearly bullshit. And they're just going against everything that has been set up thus far. Oh, a shoulder breaker. It, it could change at any moment, but as it stands, I have taken a slight lead. Oh, neck breaker! And I think Triple H is working on taking that lead back. Into the cage. And that sidewalk slam. We got Triple H right where we want him. I'm trying to mix... Oh, trying to mix up the offense so he's not... It's not so easy. Ooh, I have never reversed a hole. That was the first time in this entire playthrough that I have reversed a hold like that. And I will take it. The crowd is on my side once again, and I'm going to need them. The fans have totally 
because this big time buffed Triple H is a problem. <laughs> hey Triple H, you know what? We've been going at this for a long time and I just wanted to say I find your commitment to me STUNNING! Now this is gonna be a close one but I think I've got it. I am officially washing my hands of the game. Four matches, four losses for Triple H. Austin reigns supreme in a steel cage again. And if we look at the lay of the land, Bret Hart's making his way up. He defeated the former WWF champion, the British Bulldog. But who cares? Up at the top of the mountain is the World Wrestling Federation champion, The Rock. Can Stone Cold claim the gold? Here we go. Rocky's change of attitude may do him some good in the WWF, but it's such a radical change for this young man. Yes, The Rock did not have his own theme music yet. And I would like to clarify, I think The Rock is the WWF champion. I mean, he's up at the top of the rankings. I mean, we we're calling them rankings, but it's really just a stack of fucking TVs. <laughs> I assume The Rock is the World Wrestling Federation champion. And as the IC belt holder champion... I, big vertical suplex, am looking to secure double gold, which is not something that you see very often in the WWF. How many wrestlers have been Intercontinental Champion and WWF Champion at the same time? Ultimate Warrior did it when he beat Hogan. Who else did it? When Triple H and Austin were the two-man power trip, Triple H was the Intercontinental Champion, Tag Team Champion. Austin was the WWF Champion, Tag Team Champion. But I cannot think of one other occasion where one guy had both belts. And I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying I, I might not remember something. So let me know in the comments. The Rock looks emaciated in this game. Now, I'm not talking about his physique. I'm saying look at his face. The dark circles around his eyes. His Oh, pump kick from The Rock. The dark circles around his eyes and stuff. He just, he doesn't look like The Rock. Weird. Top rope, fist drop from Stone Cold. And if The Rock is the World Wrestling Federation champion, you know, some might say, how did he have the belt for that long? when he's such a pipsqueak, when he's getting dominated like this, but that is not what you should be thinking. You shouldn't be thinking that The Rock was never good. You should be thinking, how good is Stone Cold Steve Austin to step into the ring and dominate the people's champion like this? That's a testament to the strength, the will, the determination, and the never back down attitude of the Texas Rattlesnake. And you know what? All of this success is due to the Stone Cold Stunner! See you later, Rocky. Now, was that it? I Yeah, it was. That was it. Where is she? There she is. The WWF Championship has been won by Stone Cold Steve Austin! And that slammed out babe is here again to parade around. World Champion Conquers Strips Defender's Title. Well, that's not... That's not how you word that. Hey, champ. Your chariot awaits. I love that. What a sign of the times, you know? It's, it's not even like, hey, extra code. Extra cold cheat enabled. Okay. It's, it's, I guess it's not enough that you won the World Wrestling Federation Championship. Now, you get to have sex with this strange woman who's been running around a warehouse in a fucking limousine, whatever. Dan Dan's, 
This was really fun. A two-week journey through WWF Warzone. First time ever here on the channel. Stone Cold Steve Austin is the World Wrestling Federation champion. As promised, I love you. And I'll see you next week. Patreon.com slash 616 Entertainment. Sign up how you don't.